Today is Monday, May 14th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Monday Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. Today's guests are Steve Freed, Vice President of Grain Research at ADMIS, and Alan Bush, ADMIS's Senior Financial Economist. Steve, let's start with the grains this morning. What's the latest on the U.S.-China trade talks, and is this having an impact on the market? Well, before this weekend, uh, soybean prices had pulled back close to $10 because they're afraid that uh, the president would impose tariffs after the May 22nd deadline and, and that China would not buy U.S. beans. Uh, China, up until now, had not bought any new U.S. beans. And then over the weekend, it seemed like uh, the president backed away a little bit for one Chinese company and allowed U.S. to ship stuff to that company to help it stay solvent. And the Chinese are coming in this weekend, and th there's hope that maybe they'll start buying beans from us again. And the soybean market's up 15 cents today on that news. In the event that the Chinese continue <coughs> not to buy beans uh, from the U.S., what type of a serious impact would that have on the U.S. farmer? And you know, if we, a farmer has a four billion bushel bean crop, and if we drop 50 cents, that's two billion dollars less revenue for him. And so, you know, like the state of Iowa is the number one exporter of beans to China, and they focus that on how much it, that impacts their state economy. So, I mean, it's, it would also start a trend that the Chinese would buy more from Brazil, the Brazilian farmer would add more acres, and we would lose market share down the road even more. Are there enough beans in Brazil and South America to satisfy China demand completely, or will they have to eventually buy U.S. beans? Well, this year, they're probably China will buy 30 million tons of beans from us, and they'll buy 59 million tons from Brazil. So I don't have any problem about Brazil adding 5 million tons a year and U.S. losing that if China doesn't take any more. Now, the USDA says that China's going to take 8 million more tons next year, but I think that right now they have to buy at least 25 million, maybe 30 million tons from the U.S. no matter what. But uh, they're trying to probably negotiate as much as they can for either better prices or more out of Brazil. The two people that are hurt the most in all this is the U.S. farmer and the Brazilian crusher and the Brazilian feeder because they're in, I mean, the Chinese crusher and the Chinese feeder because in China they have to buy the most expensive beans in the world from Brazil and crush them with negative margins. What did the USDA say in the May crop report last week? The two biggest surprises was they, they dropped world 2018 and 19 corn ending stocks to only 150 million tons and China to 60 million tons. The market didn't react to it because many people think China actually has 100 million more tons than the USDA is saying. But they also raised next year's U.S. soybean exports to a record number. And some people think that that was too aggressive, that if they don't come to terms on these trade issues, we won't ship that much. So the markets really didn't react to their numbers. Plus, they also are going with trend yields. And some people think that they're too conservative, especially in the Black Sea in the United States, and that reports down the road will show maybe record yields, more stocks, which would weigh on prices. Steve, speaking of numbers, what do the technicals look like right now in the grains? Any close to any signals? Well, it's not very good. Soybeans on Friday closed the lowest level they have been since February. Um, both corn and wheat are the fifty-day <coughs> moving average, and they traded below corn four dollars and wheat five dollars. So, if we continue to week lower, um, we should see nine seventy-five beans. We could see uh, three eighty corn, and we could see four eighty to four seventy-five wheat pretty quickly because the signals are negative. Stephen, how are the U.S. crops looking right now, and uh -huh. for that matter, crops uh, around the world? Well, we, we're getting the corn planted, um, and this moisture that we're seeing is, is going to help the crop come out of the ground really quickly. And there are some people who think that the first corn crop ratings the USDA has this year will actually show higher rating than last year's record crop. 
as far as global conditions are, the only problem is in Australia where it's dry. Right now the Black Sea looks really good, Europe looks good, and Canada farmers are going to be able to plant their spring wheat crop. So in general, world weather is negative right now. Let's flip over to the financials. Uh -huh. Alan, on Friday, James Bullard of the Fed outlined a case against further interest rate hikes when he said that rates may have already reached a neutral level that is no longer stimulating the U.S. economy. How does his comments affect Fed policy? Well, basically, you have to keep in mind that he is not a voting member this year of the FOMC. But his remarks really did not affect the uh, probabilities of a rate hike at the June 13th meeting. Still looks like there is virtually almost a 100% chance that the Fed will raise at the uh, June meeting. And it still looks like there is approximately a 91% chance of another rate hike at the December meeting. So we talked a little bit about U.S.-China relations as it uh, applies to the grain markets. What's the outlook for the trade situation between U.S. and China overall and economically? Well, first of all, as Steve mentioned, the apparent concessions to that Chinese telecom company, uh, a sign of some progress being made. But also the financial markets uh, have performed as if there is a better situation lessened trade tensions between the U.S. and China. For example, there is no flight to quality buying coming into the treasuries. Stock index futures now are higher for the eighth consecutive day. So financial markets are anticipating and factoring in hopefully a resolution to one degree or another uh, with this trade situation that we have between the U.S. and China. Now the stock index futures continue to rally as you say. Even after President Trump pulled the U.S. out of a nuclear deal with Iran last week. Typically, the market doesn't like instability, uh, things of that nature. Why not? Why is that not the case this time? There was every reason for the, the stock index futures to decline on that news. Any geopolitical, uh, geopolitical problem that comes uh, uh, down the pike would normally be considered to be a negative, and yet stock indices rallied. So the fact that the stock indices could advance on what would normally be bearish news has to be viewed as a sign of strength. Possibly something better coming our way, maybe in the trade situation, maybe in the Fed being relatively slow to raise rates. But higher indices suggest some bullish fundamentals are on their way. Okay, remember the views and opinions expressed today in this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.